Hello everyone, I'm Fiona Apollo and I do art commentary. I took a break in July for some rest and recuperation, but I'm back now. So, uh, this probably isn't the most expected video for me to come back with, especially considering I've never really gone into the realm of talking about spicy works much before, but honestly, I have thoughts in relation to this specific situation and I want to get them out. Today, we're going to talk about a few prominent people within the fandom of the Disney show Amphibia who have been caught in the act of drawing suggestive works of the Calamity trio, aka the three main girls, Anne, Sasha and Marcy. We'll be doing a quick rundown of what happened, and then we'll get into my thoughts about the situation, as well as my thoughts on the subject of spicy works in general, because I think this is something that has become quite the prominent talking point online. The circumstances of this issue are something that I kind of want to use as a segue into having a conversation about the nature of spicy works, because it's a pretty big thing that seems to be at the forefront of more and more people's minds in recent years. Needless to say, trigger warning for implied inappropriate themes. It's never nice to talk about these issues when they crop up, but at the same time, I don't think just staying quiet does any favours either. I used to think it was better to say nothing, and they say that ignorance is bliss, but nah, ignorance can actually be kind of dangerous, especially with these kinds of topics. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, I'm just doing my best, honestly. Alright, no time like the present, I guess. Let's talk about what happened. So basically, this is a very quick, cut and dry controversy in my opinion, because what has actually transpired can be pretty well condensed. What happened is that on July the 10th, a Google document had surfaced which alleges that four different people who were all regarded as prominent artists in the Amphibia fandom had alternate accounts where they would draw spicy works of the three main human characters, who within the show are all depicted as being around 14 years old. So, you know, not the best impression for people who weren't familiar with the fandom. And it felt worse for some when it came about that a crew member of the show was involved as well. It was clarified a day later that only one out of these four artists were actually a crew member on the show, and they drew the trio when they were adults, which is decidedly a lesser offence than before, but still objectively controversial, all things considered. The other three were quite prominent fan artists within the community who, even if they weren't involved in the production of Amphibia itself, still had a lot of reach with their art in their chosen community. These three fan artists were the ones who depicted the characters while they were still underage, and were the ones who I believe are the most in the wrong, objectively. Disgusting! I'm purposefully omitting everyone's names just because I'm not interested in spreading their names around for various reasons. And that's kind of pretty much the whole sitch. Some people drew inappropriate works that were in poor taste, considering both the subject matter as well as the influence they have on others who, for the most part, are very young fans, and their accounts were broadcasted to this wider community of younger fans which then sparked a massive outcry. Oh, and also a fun tidbit is apparently the person who first brought it to everyone's attention is a pro shipper, which is a whole other ball game that I'm not getting into. I'm way too normie for all that garbage just yet. Go watch Celestia's video on that, she explains it pretty well. But essentially, the main thing that people are upset about is the fact that someone who worked on a beloved kids show would depict the characters in situations that are unsuitable for the demographic that it's made for, knowing the proximity that this creator has to that audience. And of course you can make the argument that they tried to separate it from their main identity and that the characters were depicted as adults, so as such it's not as bad. But the problem with this is that if someone is invested enough in something they like, they will seek out any and all content they can find about it, and that includes children deep diving into certain spaces they aren't supposed to be in. For a lot of kids as well, it's kind of a game to try and find the most overtly inappropriate content possible so that they can gross out their friends. It's not really something you can put a complete stop on. Is this inherently the fault of the adults? From this angle, not particularly particularly kids will be kids, but it's something you need to be aware of because oftentimes you will be the one who ends up paying the price, and if it does come about that you're drawing things that in the real world would get you arrested, you don't really have anyone to blame but yourself. Of course, a lot of people take this to mean that it's okay if you don't get caught, but it's been proven time and again that nothing online is temporary and you will be found out eventually. Just don't be gross, that's the only advice I can really give you on that. And of course, you can also argue that children shouldn't be in those spaces and that it shouldn't be the adult's responsibility to baby someone else if they aren't drawing anything decidedly illegal. But in the eyes of many laws across the world, any situation that involves an adult and someone who is not of age naturally involves a power dynamic that stems from things like maturity, brain development, experience, among other things. And this power dynamic almost always dictates that the grown-up in the situation shoulders the responsibility, even if there may be little to no fault on their part. It's also worth mentioning that these 
power dynamics may not always be written into law, but they can often be societal, meaning the people around you will decide for themselves if you should be condemned for it. This tends to be why people get so annoyed when, for example, a child ignores age restrictions and enters a curated adult space such as an 18 plus Discord channel, because the child won't be the one who gets in trouble even if the adults in that space were clearly trying to keep to themselves. I don't believe people shouldn't be allowed to make suggestive works, mind you, but it's just one of those things that needs to be assessed on whether you want to risk the wrong people getting hold of it, and that's the same with most things really. But that said, there are still a lot of implications when artworks of this kind are made, especially when the people making them have a hand in the source material itself. It's not unusual for people who have worked on shows to have made spicy works of kids media in the past, it's actually a fairly common thing for a bunch of different reasons. Rebecca Sugar, creator of Steven Universe, apparently drew similar works involving characters from the cartoon Ed, Ed and Eddie, but the difference there for a lot of people is that Rebecca was a child herself when she did this, which has other implications in of itself, but ultimately it made people less uncomfortable than what is currently happening with Amphibia. The nature of mature works and of people navigating their way around it has always been something that people struggle to agree on because there are so many variables that accompany it. People make mature content for different reasons. It can be an exploration of oneself, a way to work through past traumas, it can be for pure satisfaction, and some people just do it to be edgy. It's a complex thing that really can't be neatly placed into a box, and that tends to be why the conversation around it can become so volatile. Just an FYI before we go any further, if at any point it seems or has seemed like I'm speaking about this stuff in a very neutral way or are speeding through certain aspects, it's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, there is so much content within this topic that it can't all be condensed into one of my usual videos, so inevitably some aspects are going to be glossed over. Secondly, I think it's easier to have a discussion when you are able to subdue your biases in order to explain things in a more rounded way. Thirdly, I'm also on the A spectrum, and spicy works, especially in fiction, are about as interesting to me as watching paint dry. Therefore, it can be kind of difficult for me to speak about these issues very passionately. I think this is an important topic to have a conversation about because I care about people, don't get me wrong, and I'm especially interested in looking into the hows and whys of when people adopt these kinds of thought patterns and behaviours because I find it fascinating, even if the behaviour itself isn't always favourable. Call it a weird morbid curiosity if you will, but I like finding out what makes people tick, and it's hard to do that from a very strict moral standing because in order to have a mature discussion and gain a better understanding of why the people you may not agree with think or behave, I personally believe that you need to have a certain degree of flexibility in what you are willing to listen to, while obviously still keeping to certain standards and taking care to back out if and when you need to. Other people aren't wrong for just stating that creating spicy works of cartoons is questionable and leaving it at that, because they're right, but a lot of people already know this but don't necessarily understand the intricacies of how you make that jump from point A to point B of why an aspect of something is wrong, especially when you throw things like fiction into the mix. We live in a very high hypersexualized world where people don't always know where the line should be drawn because that's just the way things are, let alone within a medium where things can be exaggerated to the extreme. As well as that, the people intentionally perpetuating those behaviours likely also know that it's wrong and don't really care. Trying to reason with them just seems pointless. So I want to go a bit more into the industry side of this stuff, as well as the more objective side for a moment rather than just the emotional or moral attitudes surrounding it. Something that people are concerned about is whether or not this situation should cost someone their job or be allowed at someone's job, and I would like to point out a few things. For one thing, the art world is notoriously filled with perverts. Wow, who would have guessed? This obviously has a myriad of its own connotations and issues, but for the most part, employers won't actually turn away people who have drawn a few risque pictures, so long as they don't think it will negatively affect them. Being an artist doesn't automatically make you some kind of deviant, but art, objectively speaking, is extremely broad and doesn't particularly encourage nor discourage people to create certain works that are deemed as inappropriate in the modern day. We have to remember that art can be viewed as a visual commentary on many real-world issues, and mature content has been present in art since the medium began. Does that make it right to just go hog wild and draw whatever you want? Some people seem to think so, but there are still limits to what others are willing to put up with, and also, you know, laws. It also depends on how you frame it too. It's not a bad thing to create a piece that highlights the intense struggles of going through mental illness for example, but it becomes an issue when the piece appears to be glamorising it instead. 
That said, art is so subjective that it can be easy for someone to claim that their works were created with a specific intention in mind, and that the people viewing the piece as having alternative connotations are removing it from its original context, even though that can be a pretty flimsy argument as, again, art is subjective and the perception of it can shift due to a variety of factors such as time period, audience demographic, framing, etc. As such, it's incredibly tricky to hold artists to account when they draw certain things that are considered to be crossing a line, and this can also be incredibly frustrating when these artists have a history of abusing that fact. Another thing is something about working for Disney especially that I don't know if many people are fully aware of. When you work for Disney as any kind of artist, they include in one of their clauses that all drawings made by artists while under contract, regardless of what it may be, even if it's just a random doodle that has nothing to do with what they're working on, is officially owned by the company. A lot of us are already well aware that Disney is often not the best when it comes to employee satisfaction, so a way that some employees try to hit back on this is by drawing copious amounts of spicy works which end up being officially licensed under a presumably family-friendly company. I don't think that's what's happening here, but I just think that's pretty interesting and also hilarious that Disney has an entire archive of adult content that was created out of pure spite. So if the Rat House was to fire the crew member for doing something like this to salvage their reputation, they would probably have to fire almost all of their other employees because the majority of them have absolutely done this at some point in their careers. But that aside, I understand why people are upset, but in my humble opinion, this particular drama is not something that should be taken as a massive scandal, at least in relation to the crew members' involvement. I don't especially have any sympathy for the fan artists who drew inappropriate content of children, fictional or otherwise, because in my mind that is just wrong no matter what, don't be weird about kids. But the crew member in my eyes didn't really do anything worth being totally slandered over. The most they can be really accused of is guilt by association, which can be pretty much fixed if they were to condemn the other artists. I can't really say whether or not they were in support of what their friends were doing, so I would hope that some form of condemnation is followed up. On. So that's the whole deal surrounding the amphibia situation specifically, but now I want to discuss inappropriate works in a bit more of a broader sense and how people's minds tend to develop around it. So in this section, I kind of want to go into what I personally think about the way that people create and consume this type of media and I especially want to have a chat about the whole separating fiction from reality ordeal because that just seems to be an aspect that so many people kind of have a lot of conflicting opinions on. So why has suggestive fictional works become such a big problem on the internet and why do so many people seem to have such varied opinions on whether it should be allowed or not? The biggest contributor from what I've seen is just exposure. We see it everywhere, and this is amplified by the accessibility offered by the nature of having a portable supercomputer in your pocket. And a lot of the time we don't even realise we're looking at it, and when we do, we become so used to it after a time that it just feels normal. It can be something as random as stumbling across an underskirt shot when watching an anime, to which, when it comes to a single time, you may see it once and think, why was this included? Why was this a choice? Until you realise that there are thousands of anime out there and countless episodes that use that trope, and then, before you know it, even though you're still against it in general, if you were to continually be exposed to that type of content in different forms, such as a clip that pops up on your TikTok For You page, or those really inappropriate YouTube ads, you've become so accustomed to seeing it across these many different occasions that you don't even bat an eye anymore. And this doesn't even account for the differing opinions people will have in relation to it as well. Some people will say that it's wrong to be ogling something like that, even worse because a lot of these anime characters are not of age, and then you'll have some who justify that it's not supposed to be ogled at, you're supposed to be looking out for whatever is happening on the screen. For example, laughing at the perverted character getting their comeuppance after being caught acting sleazy. You'll even have some people trying to advocate that the choice to have a shot like that included is a commentary on the show's culture of origins, which I don't know about you, but that doesn't exactly frame places like Japan in a favourable light now, does it? And that's kind of unfair considering the vast number of people who don't agree with these kinds of things within that culture. People love to pretend that Japan is a haven where normal rules don't apply, and it has its problems, sure, and those anime scenes are one of them, but some of this stuff will still get you arrested if you're caught with it in that country. And that leads me to my next point. Why would people try to create or justify this kind of stuff. A big argument used is that many people strongly insist that fiction does not impact reality. Uh, this is neither true nor false. It depends both on the individual, some people just turn out a certain way, as well as on the environment and society that fosters this individual and teaches them how to process certain things. People who aren't taught to moderate their behaviour from an early age are more likely to imitate what they see around them, including from false realities because they don't face real life consequences for doing so. Here's an example. When I was a kid, I watched an episode of the OG Teen Titans where Cyborg ripped a bandage-like object off of Raven's face. Hold still. Ah! Ow. 
So me, a very impressionable child, went to school the next day and was sitting with a friend who showed me this bit of loose skin that was dangling off her face. So what do you think I did? I ripped it off because I was a little goblin. When I got pulled aside by the teacher and asked why I did that, I explained that I saw it on a cartoon and thought that my friend would react the same way Raven did, but she didn't. She cried her eyes out because she had just had part of her face ripped off and it hurt, and the teacher then said that I shouldn't copy things from TV that can hurt people. It's that kind of corrective nature that is just completely absent online because of a lack of consequence, even if it may be present in one's life otherwise. The anonymity afforded by online spaces as well makes it so much easier to get away with so many things. Don't get me wrong, when there is consequence, it ends up being huge and admittedly very satisfying. Just look at what happened with Creepshow Art. But ultimately, it's not that people can't differentiate from real life and fiction, it's that they want to be able to act out the way they want to in an environment that doesn't foster any measures for accountability and trying to convince them otherwise is pointless because they've already made up their minds about their intentions. Whether or not they actually believe that what they are doing will negatively impact other human beings is no longer relevant after this point. It's the same reasoning as the whole video games causing violence debate. Of course video games don't cause violence, but someone who has never been made to regulate their behaviour is far more likely to be a violent person in general. And the sad thing about this too is that after the major child development stages, which tend to slow down dramatically as we get older, it becomes even more difficult to change certain bad habits. Habits. It's doable, but incredibly slow going, and people often find it easier to become stuck in their ways the older they get. So to wrap this up, the nature of mature content for cartoons, especially online, is kind of a tricky thing to just slap a quick yes or no answer on. It depends on so many things, and in an ideal world, there would be so much better regulation and education surrounding it, to the point where this wouldn't cause such a massive ruckus. The best thing to do on an individual level is to avoid spaces that make you uncomfortable in this way, and if you do see something that you really don't think should be left in the open, report the content, block the creator, and move right along with your day. We all like to think that we can be the big hero, but sometimes the person you need to protect most is yourself. Alright, I think that's it for now. It's been a while and I'm running out of steam for this one. This topic covers a lot of things, many of which I haven't been able to fully touch upon, but there are tons of videos out there about this kind of thing, and it's better for people to listen to multiple perspectives rather than just mine. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do all sorts of things relating to art here, not just commentary, so please check out some of my other stuff. Was there anything you agree or disagree with on this one? Was there anything you feel that I forgot to mention that I should have? Please let me know, I would very much appreciate the feedback. Stay safe everyone. Bye!